Perfume of the night. You know what? I had I had to coordinate everything. Perfume of the night. Oh, the lid's popping off already. <laughs> Perfume of the night is one that's outside of my normal um, fragrance profile, but it's nice and I, I don't want to say strong. It has a longevity to it that I like. And this is called Oh So Orange. Oh So Orange by Juicy Couture. They came out with a line of, um, I don't want to say seasonal, but like in the summertime they did like Baby Blue and they did Oh So Orange and they have a bunch of different versions that are limited edition. This was limited edition. This is based in sandalwood and musk. But the top notes, so basically what welcomes you into the fragrance is mandarin orange kumquats and berries. Mandarin orange kumquats and berries. That's what you get out of this. So this is a very sweet, citrusy fragrance. Not really a floral. I mean, there is floral in it, but probably in the middle notes is where you would get the floral to connect the sweetness and the um, sort of sublime but strong sandalwood and musk base. So if you like something citrusy, but you don't want it to have the uh, sort of acidity of citrus, right? So like I would imagine there's a crispiness to CK1. A lot of a lot of Calvin Klein fragrances have a crispiness. Um, and that is something that, you know, you smell that and you go, ooh, there's a, a sort of an acidity to that that's beautiful and fresh. There's, this balances out a little bit. I almost sense something whipped in this as well, almost like a whipped cream kind of in the middle. It blends it together, yeah. Uh, Cannibal Crunch said Pledge. I don't know if, uh, maybe you've smelled this one before and it smells like Pledge to you. I don't, maybe, um, I, don't, I don't think so. I like this one. Uh, I'm not saying you said that. I'm just saying maybe that's, um, but uh, oh so orange. It's really, really good. Juicy Couture. That's what I'm wearing right now. Yeah. You know what? My mom always wore perfume. That's what. That's why I think I started to... All, all, the, all the women in my family always liked fragrances. My mom has always worn um, heavier, spicier fragrances. And I can even remember when I was a kid and she didn't really have the money to spend on them. Uh, back before there was Big Lots, there used to be a place called Pick and Save. Uh, at least in our area anyway. And they've just recently brought Pick and Save back uh, in a different uh, format. But she used to buy like dollar perfumes because it's what she could afford at the time. And uh, they always smelled so good. And of course she would buy Avon perfume. All the ladies in our family would have Avon parties and she would buy perfume from them, which I have some Avon perfumes. Actually, I have one I'm going to talk about soon. Um, and she would wear those. But, you know, she would wear Youth Dew by Estee Lauder, which is a strong fragrance. She would wear, um, um, uh, oh God, what's the one that she would wear? Some of the ones for like drugstore perfumes, like Lutece. Uh, she would wear Timeless by Avon. And I remember she used to wear Topaz by Avon, but I used to think it was called Topaz A. I would always call it Topaz A. Anyway, yeah. Uh, you can keep fragrances for a very long time. They can expire and usually the darker the fragrance, in my experience, it will li that will be one of the first ones that will go bad uh, sort of quicker, if that makes any sense. Um, it will take a long time for them to go bad, but I do have some fragrances that have turned. And actually, um, I've never talked about this before, but sometimes I buy fragrances on eBay or I watch fragrances on eBay. I'll put them in my little watch list of fragrances that are no longer made, but I might want to own, even if they are expired. Because I think to myself, I just like the collectible idea of that. But I've sort of stopped myself from doing that only because if I'm not going to be able to wear it, and I do, you know, I, I live in a, a small space. I live in a, you know, I live in an apartment. Um, and, uh, you know, I have two bedrooms, I have two bathrooms, I have a carport and a parking spot, and I have all of that. And, uh, but, uh, I don't really have the space for, for uh, a new collection of stuff like that, unless I plan on using it. But there are fragrances that are no longer made that I would love to have. Um, I do have a fragrance that was sent to me that I have not worn yet, but I have smelled and I have something special. That I, I, I'm going to wear it soon. Um, and it's Cher's new fragrance and I absolutely love it. And I'm here to tell you after smelling it for the very first time, in the brand new bottle that it was sent to me in, I can I was there for Cher's original fragrance, which was called Uninhibited, 
And for my money, it smells very much like uninhibited, which was gorgeous. I mean, a gorgeous fragrance. I'll talk about it soon. For the fragrance of the night is a fragrance that may sound like something I've talked about before. Um, uh, but, uh, I have not. I've spoken about a version of it. Now, the bottle I'm going to show you is not the original bottle either of this fragrance because, uh, I started in January, um, using a service that was gifted to me by my friend Lindsay Alice Halleck, who is here on Instagram, sometimes is on, um, uh, uh, sometimes in the live, maybe not in the live at the moment, but Lindsay got me a subscription to Scentbird. And um, this is not a paid advertisement. I'm just telling you about it because Lindsay gave it to me as a gift. And it's a way to try out new fragrances that you've never tried out before without the commitment of buying them. So even if you buy the subscription, clearly, you know, you're going uh, you to pay for it. But I, I didn't have to pay for it because it was a gift. Um, what they do, <clears throat> pardon me, this was my first uh, fragrance that I ordered. And as dumb as this sounds, I just ordered a fragrance that I already have, have in my fragrance library and have always had, but I didn't know what to order because I got overwhelmed. So my first one is here. And the way that Scentbird works is they send you the atomizer, which is refillable. And then each month they send you a refill to put inside of it. So you pick which fragrance you want. Um, I think you can just let them pick, but essentially they want you to pick. You can type in all your information, whatever. So Lindsay Alice Halleck got me this subscription. Um, and so Scentbird, the first, so here it is. And to spray it, you twist it and there's a nozzle. Now to replace it, you just pull it out and there it is. It's probably, I'm going to say about, I don't know if it says on here, but I'm going to guess a half an ounce, maybe, or maybe it says right here. It doesn't say maybe half an ounce or three quarters of an ounce. I'm not sure. Um, there's, that's how it does. And my second one already came, which I'm going to talk about soon. Um, but anyway, there's that. And the fragrance is a fragrance that I wear very consistently. Again, not a surprise because you would think that, hey, try out a new perfume with, with this damn thing. But I didn't. I, ha I had to get one that I already had. And it's called um, Aromatics Elixir from Clinique. It's a very heavy fragrance. I personally love it, but you know I love heavy fragrance. Um, we're talking about a base that really speaks through. The top notes and the, uh, and, the, and the heart of the fragrance are there and they exist and you can smell them and you can enjoy them, but the base really comes through. And the base is very simply and very heavy patchouli, incense. Uh, I'm gonna say, of course, musk, um, oak moss. Very heavy. So basically, the fragrance itself is aromatic, woody, earthy. All of those things. Not particularly spicy, but aromatic, woody, uh, um, earthy. Um, the top notes, the invitational notes, sage, coriander, verbena, bergamot. Um, I would say the middle, like the heart of this <coughs> is where more floral is. So... There's going to be a lot of, um, well, orris roots in the heart, but you're going to get a lot of t uh, tuberose, regular rose, carnation in the middle. It, it is floral, and it sounds like there's a lot of floral with all of those things that are mentioned, but really what comes through is the base of incense, patchouli, oak moss, musk. It's a heavy, heavy base, but I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite fragrances. Clinique Aromatics Elixir is what it's called. The reason I say it's familiar to, to some of you that have heard me talk about fragrance before um, is that uh, I also wear Aromatics in Black. There's another fragrance which is called Aromatics in Black, which is a version of Aromatics Elixir. And it's just a, a derivative. It goes another way. Um, I love it. it. Aromatics Elixir has been around, I would say, probably since the 90s. Very, very popular fragrance, not for the faint of heart, not for somebody that likes something that is lightly floral. If you like lightly floral, if you like uh, juicy and fruity, um, if you like citrusy, this is not your fragrance. This is your fragrance if you like it to be a bit herbal, definitely heavily patchouli, oak, musk, 
um, uh, in incensey. That's uh, not insincere, but <laughs> incense. If you like that kind of a heavy base, let me tell you, this is your fragrance. I love it. I always have it. What is one per uh, perfume that you always purchase once it runs out? Uh, Coco by Coco Chanel, for sure. Mackie by Bob Mackie, for sure. Uh, Youth Dew, although I got a brand new bottle um, uh, not too long ago. Um, yeah, but Cannibal, there are some things that smell like Lemon Pledge. Actually, there, I, I have smelled a few that have smelled like that. Um, I like free stuff. I, I like getting free things. And, you know, Mona Katan from Huda Beauty um, comes and checks out the lives sometimes when I do them. And um, she came out with her line of fragrances. There's, I think there's six of them, and they're Kaoli fragrances, and this one's called Kaoli Vanilla 28. I don't know if you can see that. And not that it matters. You can look it up if you were that interested. Um, but, you know, I like to talk about meaningless shit. So, um, Kaoli 28, or Kaoli Vanilla 28 is the name of this. And this is right up my alley. It says vanilla, but there's other stuff going on in here. So, vanilla, I don't know if... I don't know if it's like, if that's, I don't think that's the base in this. I, I don't think that's the base note in this because it's musky, it's amber, it's patchouli. It's, um, how would I say this? Like almost brown sugar, right? But um, not, not brown sugar body spray. Let me lower this a little bit. Not brown sugar body spray particularly, but you know, vanilla orchid, it's creamy. It's creamy and it's um, it's creamy and it's warm and it's sugary and like there's tonka uh, for sure in this. Um, I mean, I don't feel like there's a lot of. It's not very. It's not a confusing fragrance. When you smell this, you either like this kind of fragrance or you don't. But the thing about these is that I got all six of them, and they're intended to be layered. So you can wear them individually, just like it as is, or you can layer them to create your own thing. I have not smelled the other ones, but I know they're gonna be sickening. And plus, I mean, look at this big fat ass bottle. She just sent it to me. Like, I I don't know, I'm not on like a, a list particularly, but she came on the live and was like, hey girl, I see you're like into perfume. Like, let me send you my perfumes. And so, yeah, Kaoli uh, Vanilla 28. Ooh, you're sugary. You're sugary, I like that. So yeah, check it out, If you know, if you're into, Mm, let me tell you this. I, if I had to describe it like something else, you know I like to wear Velvet Teddy, um, not just the lipstick, but the actual perfume, um, because you know Mac did those fragrances. If you like something like that, it's up. The, it's it's that. It's that profile. It's warm, sugary. Um, not food. It's not. It's not food. Don't, please don't get me wrong in that sense. But you, you know, there's patchouli in the base, there's, there's musk, there's amber in the base, so that's always gonna last with you. If any of the top notes burn off for whatever reason, the, you're always gonna have that. So, yeah, cinches. Um, my perfume of the night uh, that I decided to wear is, I think I talked about this probably last year, maybe springtime or something, but I love this fragrance. And this is a fragrance that is memorable, I would say it's, you know, the term different, that could mean anything to anyone different. Anything is different if you don't wear it very often. But this is definitely different. But the two things I would, two words I would use to describe this is memorable and recognizable. If you're looking for a memorable and recognizable fragrance, this would be the fragrance for you. But this is one of those fragrances that's not for the faint of heart. This is Alien by Mugler. I love Alien. It is strong. It is a strong fragrance. And usually I like fragrances that are sexy and mysterious and or romantic maybe. Uh, for me, this isn't really necessarily all sexy. It's definitely not a daytime fragrance for me. Maybe it is for you. Wear it where you like it. Wear it where you want to wear it. But for me, this is... Uh, definitely based in white amber. The scent is based in white amber. The top, what you smell, what draws you into it is jasmine. So if you like jasmine, that's definitely what, what draws you in and that it does stick around for a while. And what's connecting both of those is sort of a woodsy note. So woodsy, white amber. So this is not to me particularly spicy, 
But when I tell you jasmine, I don't mean floral in the sense of light daytime. It is, it's a strong fragrance. I, I've, I will tell you that what I've heard from some people, not a lot of people, but I have heard from people that are very sensitive to fragrance. They've said, oh, that smells like rat spray. That smells like bug spray because it's so pungent and so strong and so heavily jasmine. Um, if you're looking to try something and you, and you say to yourself, I have everything. I, I have all the fragrances. I want something different. This would be the one that you want to buy. If you're looking for a Mugler fragrance and you don't know which one to get first, don't get this one first. I don't think this is your first one from Mugler. If you're getting a Mugler fragrance and you want sort of a bit of everything, that would be like maybe Womanity, which is a fragrance that Detox wears. Um, uh, maybe that would be a good one. Or you could do, I would say Angel, but Angel's very sweet. It's chocolatey, it's vanilla. You could do Angel Muse maybe, because that's a little, I would say a little bit lighter than the other. Um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's the fragrance. And I, um, I, I like this one actually. And if you look at the bottle at first, when I looked at it, uh, when I, when I first saw the, the promos for this years ago, I mean, this has been out forever. I thought I was seeing like a deco, like an art deco kind of thing. But the more I look at it, the more I see like a talisman a little bit, something, um, like, a, like a rune or something, something old, like something, and maybe that's the idea of this because it's alien. And I, I don't know if you're, you know, somebody that's into ancient aliens or if you're into uh, what I feel that being a connection between, um, uh, you know, the time of the dinosaurs and, the, and then aliens. Like, I feel like aliens have been here forever. I, that's just me. Don't think I'm too crazy. Staunch likes the CK1, Crispiness, CK Man at Ross. And all. Okay, that's interesting, um, Staunch. I was think I have CK Man as well, and I was thinking about it the other day because I was going to talk about it on here. It is different from the CK uh, uh, other a lot of their profiles. Um, there is something different about it. I do I do wear mine. I do like it quite a bit, but it's definitely a departure from regular CK One for sure. Um, oh my God, Lori! Yes, exclamation. Uh, Tropical fruity perfumes are your favorite. You know what's really nice, honestly. Uh, J Lo Glow is a to me is really nice uh, a tropical perfume, and also there's Miami Glow, and I love that so much. Hi, Bussy. Hi, David Rios. Yep, J Lo is hard to find. I'll tell you. Years ago, there's a plus size clothing store, and it's called The Avenue. Years ago, they used to have knockoff fragrances for $5. They had the best knockoff of JLo Glow. I'm not even joking you. It was the right, it was just as strong as the original. I mean, 